I never on seen April a JCS video. 2018. Don't at approximately play Azura's 1 rock. 20 p.m. The city of Toronto witnessed the worst mass murder in its history as 25-year-old <laughs> Alec Manassian was seen on CCTV speeding down the sidewalks in a rental van, cutting down each and every soul in his deadly path. Ten people lost their lives. Sixteen others were severely maimed. His vehicle eventually came to a halt, at which point he was arrested at gunpoint. He was then brought to a Toronto police station and subjected to interrogation nine hours later. He killed ten people. And you can just have a seat in the corner right over there, okay? Okay. Just have a seat right there, please. Thanks very much. Now he? Babe, it's bedtime. time. New soda stream. Dude, I, I'm so happy this video is 50 minutes long because that one guy in my chat that told me to hurry up and play the game. Oh, this is for you, motherfucker. Fuck you. Hello. I'm a Hi. petty guy. You're doing good. How are you? Good, good. Did you drink water? Sure. Thank you so much. How are you feeling? I'm good. You feeling okay? My name's Rob Thomas. Hey, how are you? It wasn't even a donation. You he didn't even okay? give me money. He just typed it. Yeah, yeah. Even a, I'm yeah, sorry. Probably had better days than this. Moving on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I am a little shaken, to be honest. A it's not like it's not my usual day, obviously. These eerily literal and matter of fact responses will be continuous throughout this interrogation. You will not see a shred of remorse, nor a single attempt to mask the horror of what he had done just hours before. He is diagnosed with Asperger syndrome, yet comes across far more sinister than the average person with the condition. An unfortunate myth about the disorder is that diagnosed individuals have no emotions whatsoever, which is simply not the case. They can have a harder time identifying and fully expressing their emotions, yet most are able to do so to a certain degree. Being autistic doesn't mean you are at greater risk of evil deeds. If this character didn't have Asperger's, his moral compass would still be corrupt and would still be void of empathy for for the victims, but more able to fake empathy for his own self-preservation. Yeah, yeah, no, I can appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alec, do you mind if I call you Alec? Yeah, sure. Is it? What do your friends normally call you? Alec. Alec. Yeah. Alec, my name's Rob Thomas. So I want you to call me Rob from here on in, okay? Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. The reason for the detective's friendly disposition is self-explanatory. It will allow for the development of rapport, mm. thus making the suspect more likely to open up to questioning. Yet one might wonder why further information is even needed at this point. This After makes you all, feel like a five-head. The five evidence head. they already had on the suspect thus. was conclusive. He was without the word question thus. the culprit. Yet when a crime is so heinous and abnormal, an appeal for insanity is always a strong solicitation mm. from a defense team. Yet if the detective can establish a motive, it can be used to refute it. And the more detailed and clear-cut the motive, the stronger the state's case will be against him, and establishing this motive will be the priority for the detective throughout this interrogation. It's just a case of building a strong enough connection with a suspect to allow him to divulge it. He needs to feel safe and trust the man he is speaking with. Alec, uh, I want you to understand something. I'm a senior detective with the Toronto Police. Do you understand what that means? Uh, yes. Now, uh, here's what I want to do, uh, Alec. Um, I want to talk to you, okay? Um, we're going to spend a, a, a good deal of time together, okay? Uh -huh. um, it's important that I talk to you, all right? Um, I'm going to ask you questions, okay? I'm going to ask you questions about uh, your background, your education, um, your relationships with your family and friends, um, work, travel, and I'm going to ask you questions about what happened today, okay? Uh, I, I, I you briefly read your dono. If you, don't want. you didn't end harder if than me. If you do decide to answer my questions, would you do me the favor and, and just speak from the heart, okay? And just be truthful, that's all I ask. Does that sound fair? Yes. Is that okay? Okay. Um, now, my understanding is, uh, earlier today, um, there was an incident, and you ultimately got arrested by a police officer. Do you remember that? I do remember getting arrested. Okay. Uh, do you remember uh, it was a uniformed police officer who arrested you? So in other words, he was a police officer in a, in a uniform? 
Yes, I remember he had a uniform. Yeah, okay. And I know there was a bit of an altercation. We'll get into that. But basically, I just want to kind of uh, you know, cover off a few points before we get started. My understanding is that uh, that incident, the time that you got arrested, incident you were killed 10 people. Area of Young Street earlier today. Is that right? Uh, and a police officer told you that you were going to be placed under arrest. And he placed you under arrest. Do you remember that? I remember that. Okay. Do you remember what he arrested you for? I believe I may have been arrested oh my God. for something similar to murder. He carefully avoids defining his actions as murder, and the reasoning behind this will be revealed later on. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I, uh, I believe it was originally you were arrested for attempted murder, and subsequent to that, uh, the officer placed you in handcuffs. Is that right? Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah, now I remember that. Do you remember the officer reading you that? To be honest, um, the, I encountered uh, very, uh, I encountered various police officers. I don't remember which one read me that. Okay. God. Uh, but nevertheless, you were read, you were read. We call that a caution. You were read that caution. Yes, actually, now that you mentioned the word caution, I do remember hearing the words of primary caution and secondary caution. Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, that's, that's interesting because a lot, a lot of people can rem remember those words. Okay, so that's what I read you is a, what we refer to as a primary caution. Further caution, yeah, now, yeah, okay. In addition to that, I just want to clarify one more thing. Um, did, you, did you speak to the police and, and tell them what happened today? Sorry, I'm just uh, need a minute to think about that. Are you asking if I in any way confessed? Well, I'm, I'm asking if you, if you uh, yes, if you confessed or if you uh, made a statement at all to any other police officer. I never made any significant statement about any events that occurred before I was arrested. Great, great. Okay, so uh, if you did have any conversation with any police officer prior to being brought into this room, all right? And that includes uh, making a statement or a confession. Okay, uh, I want you to ignore what you've said. Okay, and uh, I don't want you to uh, refer back to that conversation. Okay, and what I mean by referring back, I don't want you to tell me uh, about any conversations you've had with any other police officers. Okay. okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is start fresh. We call this a clean slate. Okay. So from here on in, okay, I want this to be a fresh start. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. The investigator goes through each sequence of events from the suspect's arrest to his arrival at the police station, as well as each of the charges laid against him. This is essentially making sure the suspect is fit to be interrogated, and further establishing that he understands his level of jeopardy. All of these steps are emphasized when the suspect has any type of developmental disorder or psychiatric impairment. The investigator needs to remove any slight possibility that a defense team could use to argue unjust or improper practice. My understanding is you were taken to the cell area? Yes. Okay, and you were uh, placed in a cell. Mm. And uh, uh, my understanding is that cell is a bathroom. It has a toilet. Yes. It has a toilet and a sink. Yes. And, uh, and then following that, now there were a couple of other events that are important. Uh, one was, um, my understanding is- How long ago did he kill 10 people? To speak to a lawyer. It was this day. Yes. Okay. Today. And you uh, you indicated to the officers that you didn't have a lawyer. Correct. And that you didn't. Well, the know day this is filled, called. obviously. Correct. And so the officers offered you an opportunity to speak to duty counsel, which is that free legal service that I talked about. Correct. Okay. And my understanding is you spoke to to duty counsel. Correct. Okay. Um, and you did that in private. Is that right? Correct. In other words, there wasn't anybody listening to your conversation? Correct. Okay. Now, I don't want you to tell me what the lawyer said, but did you understand what the lawyer was telling you? Yes. Okay. Are you satisfied with the information that he told you? Yes. Okay. So my understanding so is, where is his um, lawyer? as the night progressed and as we were learning more information, uh, it, it came to our attention that uh, um, seven people have, have, have died. Sorry, nine people have died. I apologize. Uh, um, as a result of an incident that occurred on Young Street. And uh, so subsequent to that, uh, my understanding is the officers came down and they spoke to you to advise you that, you would, you, that the charges would be upgraded to nine counts of first-degree murder. Do you understand what first-degree murder is? 
It's a premediated murder and completely intentional and considered to be what's known as in cold blood. Well, yeah, yeah that's a fairly, uh, a fairly uh, 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 uh. precise way of uh, describing it. What we, we call it premeditated. It means premeditated. You understand what premeditated means? Yes, it means it would mean that someone planned for that murder in advance. Right, planning and deliberation. In other words, you, you, um, if somebody committed first degree murder, they would have uh, took the time out to think about what they were going to do, uh, sit down and uh, uh, deliberate over the, the plan. So in other words, they were going to sit down and go over the details of the plan, figure out what it is they were going to do, and how they were going to execute the plan, and so on and so forth, to commit a murder. Plan and deliberate. That's what it means. So there's a lot of thought and energy that goes into planning to kill somebody. That's that's what first degree murder is. Okay. Why are we fast forwarding? Um, you're oh. going to be charged with 10 counts of first degree murder. Okay. Uh, as well as 15 counts of attempted murder. Um, I've read you your rights to counsel, your caution, secondary caution, so forth. Uh, do you wish to speak to a lawyer? Oh boy. Come on. The choice is yours. Yes, I will speak to a lawyer. You want to speak to a lawyer? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, did you have a lawyer, or did you want to speak to duty counsel? I'd like to speak to duty counsel, please. Okay, no problem. So can you just hold on? Just Can you sit tight for one second? I'm just going to just exit the room here for one minute. So, before we go any further, just tell me what happened from the time we left this room until the time we came back. What took place? My lawyer told me not to answer. Okay. Due process was given to the suspect upon the request of legal counsel, and as expected, he was advised to remain silent. Yet this doesn't mean authorities are legally obligated to stop the questioning process once the suspect is briefed. Although the suspect has been advised to remain silent, Detective Thomas will have lost no confidence with regard to the primary objective. Uh, I understand that, okay, and, and I'm glad you told me that. Um, you know why? Because that, that tells me you understand what your rights are. Okay, um, but I need, you need to understand something, okay? Um, we, the police, have a, have a job to do, okay? And, and that job includes uh, collecting uh, evidence, speaking to people, um, trying to understand and uncover what's happened, what took place, uh, and asking questions. And uh, we're obligated to, to, to sit down and, and speak to people like yourself who are in, your, in this position and ask you questions, all right? Uh, your lawyer's right. You don't have to answer any questions, okay? But you need to understand something, Ellen, okay? Um, I still have to ask you questions, okay? Uh, and I'm going to ask you questions, all right? Uh, and I'm going to talk, okay? And it's not I'm, not, I'm not doing that to, to, to make you feel intimidated or to, to make you scared or to say things that you don't want to hear, okay? But the bottom line is um, we have a very difficult job to do, okay? And, and this is a very, very important matter that we're, we're dealing with here today, all right? So uh, I'm going to ask you questions. Uh, if you don't want to answer them, you can tell me you don't want to so answer So what was the game you were uh, playing you yesterday, I, I totally the ninja game with up... As Warm long as snow. we can still maintain that respect that we talked about at the beginning. Is that cool? Yes. Is that cool? You're not going to offend me, okay? Um, uh, you're, you're not going to make me upset or, or, or insult me if you say, Rob, I don't want to answer that question, okay? The detective recounts the events that occurred from the time they last left the room to the time they returned. Now, he, if I'm not mistaken, hey, the shut, officers take a stop. Uh, fed you, is that right? Yes. Uh, downstairs in the cells? Yes. What did they feed you? He then poses the first open-ended question, a question that cannot be answered with a yes or no response. Sandwich and juice. A sandwich and a juice, okay. This may seem inconsequential, yet it's a fairly significant breakthrough. The suspect has already unintentionally gone against his lawyer's advice, which would have been to only respond with yes, no, or I don't wish to answer, and only the question is not related to the crime. If he is capable of making a slip-up this early on, it lets the detective know he will be likely to make a more serious error later on when he encounters more incriminating mm. questions. The strategy will now focus on All the right, development 
of rapport, fine. while slowly oh, and subtly shifting the dialogue from trivial matters to the actual circumstances related to the crime. What was that? <sighs> I didn't have uh, access to the time at the, the time I was uh, fed. Okay. Uh, are you hungry? No. Okay. Did you have anything else to eat today? I ate before uh, I was arrested. Okay. And, and, and what, uh, what time was that? I don't recall. My man got food okay. before he ran over ten people. I don't recall. Okay. All right. Uh, if, if you're hungry at all, at any point in time, you just let me know. Oh. Okay? If you need to borrow the washroom, you just let me know. Okay? I'm going to leave that up to you to tell me. Okay? Because I'm not going to know if you're hungry or not. I'm not going to know if you need to go to the washroom. So I'm going to rely on you to tell me that. Is that cool? Yes. All right. Um, how much sleep did you have last night? About eight hours. About eight hours. How, how <laughs> slept. did you sleep? Good sleep. I slept well. You slept well. And when, where, where did you sleep? Was it your home? I uh, I do not wish to answer that. Okay. All right. Uh, nevertheless, you slept well. Okay. Um, I want to ask you something, Alec, and this is important. Uh, are you on any kind of medication right now? No. Okay. So do you take any, what I mean by medication, do you take anything, anything prescribed for any physical injuries or ailments of any type? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Uh, what about medication for psychological issues? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Alec, can I ask you this? Um, because it's important. And, and I'm saying this because um, I think I know the answer. But uh, am I wrong to understand that uh, in high school you were uh, identified as someone with special needs? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. How is uh, how are things at home? Good. Uh, with you and your family? You, you, yes. Are you close to your mom and dad? Yes. Yeah. And what about your relationship with your brother? It's good. Mm -hmm. um, I understand you were born in Canada. Yes. Yeah. And your uh, your parents immigrated to Canada um, some time ago, um, and they're originally from Iraq. Is that right? I do not yes. wish to uh, confirm or deny that. Okay. All right. Okay. I just say that because um, we've spoken to your dad, and uh, um, he's worried about you. I'll tell you that. Okay. The investigator evokes the sentimental thought of the suspect's father being worried about him. It's designed to conjure an emotional feeling in his mind. Um, and I ask you these questions, and, and I'm not trying to intimidate. I'm not trying to scare you. Okay. The emotional conception of his father's concern is then interlinked with oh the immediate God. questioning process taking place. There was no given explanation of any resemblance or connection between the two elements, yet the intimate thought of his father has now been subjectively merged with a detective. It's a subliminal and also very subtle attempt to build trust. A simple way of putting it would be that the investigator is trying to develop a father figure connection with a suspect and then use the assurance of a father figure to extract information. You also start start to see the detective use terminology and parlance associated with parenthood. Um, the reason why I ask these questions is because it's important that I get to know you better. All right? Um, we just met for the very first time. And uh, you don't know me. Am I right? Correct. Right. And uh, uh, I, uh, I've never met you before. But I, know, I do know a great, a great deal about you. And. Um, it's important I get to know you better. And the reason why I say that is because um, this is an important issue that, that, that brings you here today. Okay? It's very serious. And um, what they say at church. I think I've brought us here today. <laughs> I would be I don't know neglectful if I didn't at least try and understand who you are. That's all I'm trying to do. You understand? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Do you yes. feel intimidated right now? Are you scared or anything like that? No. Okay. Uh, will you let me know if, 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 you, if that ever happens? I will let you know. Okay. All right. My understanding is um, you were in a, a, a special needs class in, in high school. Okay. In my, in my conversation with you, in my experience with, uh, with, with people with special needs, because uh, I've been doing this a long time, and I have actually family members who uh, you know, have uh, you know, special needs because of a variety of different reasons. Um, 
I can recognize uh, uh, people who, um, you know, who, uh, who have special needs. And uh, so I, the reason why I'm saying that is because I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying, okay? Um, I don't want to be saying something that is going to confuse you or make you feel uncomfortable uh, or, or make you feel scared. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you are you in any kind of relationship right now with um, with a, with a, an intimate partner? I mean, do you have a girlfriend or a? I do not wish to answer that. No. Okay. All right. Um, what about friends? Do you have a, a, a group of friends that you typically hang around with? I do not wish to answer that. Am I to understand that you've you've had some military experience in the past? Yes. Yeah, man. Okay. Yes. Is it in, the, in Canada? I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, my dad was in the military. Did you have a particular skill that you wanted to develop, or was it just? I was interested in uh, learning how to uh, use uh, weapons. Beautiful. Spe okay. Specifically, uh, large guns. I never, unfortunately, I never made it far enough in my basic training to uh, use guns, uh, so I don't know what type of guns the uh, uh, military uses. Oh, okay. Do you find yourself playing? Do you play a lot of a lot of video games? Guy like you, 25 years old, imagine you're. Yeah, I actually I actually like playing video games, especially the uh, violent ones. The violent ones, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just like to uh, let out all my urges that's, into the that's, TV screen. That's why they're uh, there, right? So as far as being a gamer, how would you classify yourself? Are you? Uh, a I would gamer? classify myself as a hardcore gamer. Hardcore gamer. So in terms oh, of no. hours spent during the day playing video games, how often would you? How many hours would you spend? I would say an average of uh, five hours per day. My understanding is you're living at home. You don't live on your own. Am I right? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Uh, but you have a good relationship with your mom and dad. Yes. Yeah. And has your relationship always been? Good with your mom and dad? Yes. Okay. And it's hardcore. And supportive and loving throughout your life? Yes. And um, yes. were there any difficulties in your life growing up with your mom and dad? No. No. Uh, what about with school? Were there difficulties with, uh, with, with school growing up? No. No? Uh, and so when I talk about that, I'm talking about like the school curriculum, you know, the, you know, going to school, learning and, and, and uh, you know, completing your assignments and things like that. Were there any issues? No. Okay. What about the students? Uh, no, I never had any issues. Never had any issue with any of the students or anything no. like that? No. Um, uh, and, I, and I say this uh, because, you know, sometimes these things are important. Uh, were you, um, how were you treated by the other students? I was treated well. You treated well, okay. Um, did you have any difficulties with any particular group of students? No. No. Uh, what about difficulties with uh, uh, girls in particular? No. No, no. no difficulties with girls at all? No. No, not at all. How do you feel about uh, girls in general? I am attracted to them. Oh, you are? Okay, okay. So you're heterosexual? Yes. Would it be fair to say that? Okay, that's, that's important. Um, have you ever had a relationship with a, with a, a female? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Um, in terms of females, I mean females and women, because you're 25, you're a young man, right? We'll call them women. Um, in terms of your feelings towards women in general, uh, how would you describe that? I would say that sometimes I am a bit upset that they choose to uh, date uh, obnoxious men instead of uh, uh, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. So y my understanding is um, oh, no. y you have some problems with women who date <laughs> obnoxious men. Right? Yes. And these guys, I'm thinking you're, t you're talking about the fellows who are loud, uh, uh, arrogant, um, uh, generally uh, uh, outgoing and popular with girls. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and you have a problem with the women that date these fellows? Yes. Why is it that you have a problem with, with the women? Because I feel that uh, it's illogical to be uh, dating such men when they could be dating uh, gentlemen instead. Right, right, right. That makes like sense. Like myself. I mean, uh, and I've seen that because I've grown up. 
And I'll tell you one of the issues that I had as a kid growing up, because I was, uh, this is going to say, you might not believe me, but believe, I, I, was, I wasn't a very big kid growing up. I was actually very, very small. Uh, and it took me a long time to, 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 to grow. And uh, so as a result, uh, the, I, you know, I, I was kind of ostracized. You know what I mean by ostracized? I was kind of cast aside. Cast aside, yeah, yeah. And, uh, or uh, I left out, like I wouldn't get picked for teams, you know, or anything like that. You know, I was always kind of the last guy. Yeah, you ever see those, uh, those, uh, you know, those television shows where, you know, all the kids are lined up and they're getting picked for, you know, the teams and there's always one guy left out at the end? Yeah. That, that was me. I was, I was, I was that guy. And, uh, and, and I never, I was never uh, very popular with uh, women, girls in, in, in school. And, uh, and that kind of actually went on through uh, the early part of my, my, my adulthood uh, until I started, you know, getting taller and uh, mature, right? But uh, I understand exactly what you meant because I was, as a kid growing up, I was, um, you know, I mean, I was like any other kid, any other young man, right? It would look at uh, uh, attractive girls and I knew I was probably just as smart, if not smarter than some of the clowns they were dating. But because for whatever reason I didn't have what it took, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't date me. Because I think because I was short, they wouldn't date me, and they'd end up dating, you know, the tall jocks and the other, you know, the good-looking fellows. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. Then you kind of resent these girls, right? Yeah. Because you know that's kind of a superficial way of uh, deciding, you know, who it is. Because you're height get. is an unfair. You can't control your height. This is the first time the suspect added his own input to a topic without being asked a question first. It's a sign that he is beginning to develop trust, and the investigator now maintains this development by focusing on the detail that made him open up. Right, exactly. Right, 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 right. What other things can't you control? You can't control uh, your looks. It's so your great that you're willing to share these home <laughs> videos of you with <laughs> us. Thank you. No, you are a good looking guy. You keep yourself well. And you're a good looking kid. You know, you're tall. Um, what other things can you control? I'm unaware. I'm, I'm not aware of anything else you can't control. Uh, what about um, like phys physical disabilities, right? Obviously, if you were blind or, you know. Unfortunately, you, you can't control that. Yeah, you can't control that. That's what I mean. So these are things you can't control or, um, you know, other disabilities, you know, uh, if you're mentally handicapped or if you, uh, you, you know, you're, you have an amputee or, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's other, other things. And I, and I, and so, so does that, would, would you include that in those, those issues that you can't control? Yes. And so, yes. Uh, so how long have you had this, um, this feeling towards uh, women who are attracted to, you know, this particular type of guy? Ever since I uh, started uh, college. Ever since you started college. Okay. And, and did it, did, was it was it something that occurred as a result of a single incident? Like, did, did, was there one particular moment in your life where it sort of struck home? This was a problem, or was it just a? A broad outline of a motive oh has essentially been identified now for the crime, and the detective LSF is now trying to zero in on particulars. The more detail he can get from the suspect about his established motive, the more incriminating it will be in a court of law. On Halloween of uh, 2013, I was attending a house party, mm -hmm. and I uh, walked in and attempted to uh, socialize with some uh, girls. Uh, however, they all uh, laughed at me and... Uh, held the arms of the uh, big guys instead. Really? Yeah. Well, wow, that's kind of rude. And how did that make you feel? I felt uh, very angry. Yeah. Anger and resentment the underlying causes for revenge. The reason the legally insane are given leniency is because they are deemed incapable of these complex and multi-layered emotions, thus incapable of acting with evil intent. Their criminal infractions will have no reason or purpose. Yet the suspect has now admitted to quenching the hostility he felt from rejection by inflicting pain and suffering on others. Yet they would, because I considered myself a supreme gentleman, I was angry <laughs> that, that they would uh, give their love and affection to obnoxious brutes. And so it was that particular act, and that was sort of a defining <laughs> moment that made you think that, you know, this is this is wrong, and 
you know, these people are oh, yes. no. fairly treating you in, in, in the way that they were. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that makes sense. I appreciate you talking about that. That, uh, that says a lot. And um, so, so from that point on, what, uh, what, 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 what did you start doing? I uh, started thinking that it's unfair that uh, how many views does this have? A s certain uh, guys will not get any uh, love and affection from girls. This is why the word incel is so heavily associated with entitlement. If you're a normal human being, you might feel lonely when you're not getting love and affection, but not enraged. If you think you are entitled to love and affection, when you don't get it, anger and resentment will likely arise. Okay. And, and what, 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 what do you mean by certain guys? Such as me, that are, uh, that are very uh, nice and uh, act gentlemanly. Right, right, right. Are there other guys? Did you find other guys? Uh, oh, other guys? There, I know of several other guys over the internet who uh, feel the same way, but I know they are, I would consider them uh, too cowardly to uh, act on their anger. Oh, okay. And so on the internet, what, where, where, what are you talking about in terms of? Uh, specifically oh my uh, God. boards on uh, 4chan. Oh, okay. 4chan. I'm familiar with 4chan. Right, so 4chan is a website, and within 4chan there are these messaging boards. Yes. And they're individual mm. boards specific to like-minded people. <sighs> yes. So when did you first start going on the 4chan? Since uh, 2014. Oh, okay. All right. And how did you learn about 4chan? For a year uh, after I the college incident. I was about it uh, by a friend at college. Oh, okay. All right. And did, was he on it as well? Or? Yes. Okay. What's his name? I don't wish to okay. answer. Okay. I understand. What's the general... Uh, 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 the topic within these message boards? Well, on a B, the, uh, or random, the general topic is random. It's literally any random uh, um, topic. Mm -hmm. On R9K, it's, they uh, call us uh, space robots. Okay. Uh, the topic is usually uh, frustrations at an inability to lose one's virginity, specifically for young males. Okay. Uh, poll, which is politically incorrect, mm -hmm. is the general topic is basically political discussions with an alt-right bias. Political discussions with an alt-right, so you're, uh, you're, you're ultra-conservative, or you're yes. the, oh, like a, you know, in the American uh, definition, would be, you'd be you know, ultra-Republican. Yes. Okay, so you, what would your, <clears throat> what would your political views be in the alt-right uh, uh, message board? I actually don't have any uh, political views. I only uh, uh, the only reason I have uh, talked with them was just because I enjoyed their uh, style of uh, conversation. Okay. And what was the style of conversation? Uh, it was very uh, blunt and honest. So, and what would it be? What would it typically focus around, or what would the what would the, tip, the typical conversations contain? Uh, red pill truths about uh, why uh, women uh, choose to. A date uh, obnoxious men. Date the Chads. Yeah. The Chads. The Chads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, the Stacys going for the Chads. Exactly. The Stacys are the, yeah, the you know the, the the dizzy dumb girls dating the the goofy you know jocks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So you call them Stacys and Chads. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard that term before. I I've done a little bit of um, uh, reading and I know a little bit about um, involuntary uh, celibacy. C c c celibacy, right? So, being celibate, involuntarily yes. celibate. What does that mean? That means, an celibacy means uh, uh, someone who never perform has a sexual intercourse. Right. Uh, involuntary celibacy means this wasn't your choice. I you see. essentially are uh, have been thrown into true forced loneliness and you're unable to lose your virginity. Right. This is especially uh, painful for uh, young males. When did you first, sorry, you mentioned this and I forgot, when did you first go on to 4chan? 2014. 2014, and specifically when in 2014? May 23, uh, 2014. Uh, how were you able to remember that? Because I remember that was a uh, very significant day. Okay, what, what, day was, what was that? Uh, that was when uh, Elliot Roger uh, decided to essentially uh, commit an uprising, a beta uprising, if you will, right. against the uh, Chads and the Stacys. <laughs> okay, okay, and that was in the United States? Yes. 
So explain to me this movement. What's this movement about? It's basically, it's basically oh a movement of my God. The, uh, incels such as myself who are unable to get laid. Therefore, we want to overthrow the uh, chads, mm -hmm. which would uh, force the Stacys to be forced to uh, reproduce with the incels. Right, right. Okay. When you say incels. Involuntary uh, celib celibate. Celibate. So that's just a, a, sh a short for form for 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 fellas who can't uh, get laid. Can't, oh can't have sex. my <laughs> god! And uh, what happened in the uh, Elliot? Rogers this isn't real. Uh, There's no way. Uh, uh, uprising. What did he do? I know he uh, used a uh, gun as well as a, a vehicle to. Um, Convert the life status of certain individuals to convert a the life status. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Death status. Right. Um, only <laughs> to uh, carry the message that um, <laughs> incels uh, can't be oppressed. Sorry. Right. Right. So it was a. Uh, uh, it was an act of rebellion. <laughs> yes. And, and it was, um, and, uh, and um, out of frustration and anger. You could call it an incel rebellion. Incel rebellion, exactly, right, yeah, okay. Oh so what did God. you discuss with these guys? It's funny, but it's we like, he really uh, killed 10 people. At, uh, he, um, so I this is similar to the chat who wrote that well-worded, worried message to they. What are you, Nick? Timed so, strikes mm -hmm. on this society is another in order level. to, um, Confuse and uh, shape the foundations. Well, well, I, I, I gotta go back. I want to hear. Um, I didn't hear. Society and being unable to get laid. Right. Yeah. Okay. Out of right, frustration and anger. You could call it an incel rebellion. Incel rebellion. Exactly. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what did you discuss with these guys? We discussed our uh, frustrations at um, society and being unable to get laid, and we were plotting a certain. Uh, timed strikes mm -hmm. on society mm -hmm. in oh order to um, confuse and uh, shape the foundations just to put all the uh, normies in a uh, state of panic. Okay, and who would be a normie? Uh, normie means uh, normal people. That would be anyone who is uh, considered to be uh, normal by uh, the unfair standards of society. But not the Chads or Stacys. Chads and Stacys, Chads and Stacys are actually... Mm, above normies, or at least they think they're above normies. Of course, normies. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So is it fair to say you've got Chads and Stacys up here, normies down here, and then you've got celebs who believe that they are being Incels. repressed? Incels. Incels, sorry. Yes. Incels who believe they're being rep 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 uh, uh, suppressed or repressed, yes. and and so as a result, even the playing field. Yes. The, you know, they, they, uh, they convert the... Stacy's and Chad's from living to dead. He's making a tier list. I can't come out on us to on top. Yeah, it's more than. Oh so is there? Are, 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 so the the targets. Who are the targets for the this uprising? Be all of the uh, alpha males. All the alpha males. So the Chad's. Yes. So that's those are the people you that that, that you want to kill. Yes. Okay. All right. And who else? Any uh. Uh, any of the Stacys who uh, do not wish to uh, give their love and affection to the incels. So they, they, you, they're a target as well? Yes. To be killed? Yes. Okay, and what about the normies? No, uh, yeah, nor normies. Now we're just getting blunt. Yes, we, uh, do, we, do, we don't necessarily wish to uh, kill the normies, but we do wish to uh, subjugate them uh, in order to make them understand that, the, um, that our type is uh, the more superior one. Right, right. So when you say subjugate, what do you mean? Mm. Mean, meaning uh, either imprison them or put them in a lower position in society okay. so right. that they acknowledge um, the incels or the uh, Pepe the Frog types as the more superior ones. So, okay, so you... The, what? Uh, things that I'm, I'm not familiar with. So, sorry. So Pepe the, Pepe uh, the but Frog? We, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a mascot on 4chan. We, uh, he's a mascot? Yes. Oh, mascot on 4chan. Yes. And he's I, was, I was using a metaphor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, he's actually uh, worshipped uh, quite frequently. Oh, okay, okay. Who did you have conversation with first? Let me ask you that. Elliot. Elliot. So how did you learn of Elliot? Because on um, on the we uh, private messaged each other on uh, Reddit yep. after I saw one of uh, his posts, mm -hmm. uh, and 
uh, we just talked about each other and got to know each other and we found each other very interesting. We both had the same uh, frustrations at society, right. despite being uh, separated by distance uh, so far apart. Right, right, right. Did you ever visit him? I uh, know, but I wish I could have. Yeah, yeah. Did he ever come and visit you? No, but I wish he did. Yeah. When specifically did your first contact or have co contact with Elliot? January of 2014. 2014. And uh, when did you stop having co communication with him? Uh, as, as soon as he was deceased. Dude, why is this okay. guy on your so, stream reading off uh, your Discord box? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> they were private DMs. Shut up, man. Uh, 2014. May 23rd. Yeah, you said that. Uh, so when did you last speak to him? May uh, 20. May 20th. And so what did he tell you? He told me that uh, he has to oh, go. Man. He must. He is on a very important mm -hmm. mission. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he might not make it back alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what did you say to him? I uh, kind of had an idea in my head of what he was uh, planning, but I didn't want to uh, think it was true at the time. So I said, so I replied and said, uh, I wish you uh, good luck with that. Right on. Okay. And so you last speak to him on March 20th. May 20th. May 20th. I'm sorry, May 20th, 2014. Yes. He commits his, his, his acts on the 23rd of May. Yes. And uh, when did you learn that uh, what he had done? I saw it on the news later that night. Later on the, on the 23rd? Yes. Okay. And what did you think? Uh, I thought that I came to the understanding that this is the mission that he had to uh, carry out. Okay. All right. And anything else? Dude. I felt kind of uh, proud I am of baffled. him for uh, his acts of bravery. Okay. Oh, right. my God. And what about... Uh, how you started to, 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 to change your thinking. Was, was, any of the, was, was, that, was any of that going on? I was starting to feel uh, radicalized at that time. You were, okay. And when you say radicalized, what do you mean by that? Meaning I felt it was time to take action and not just sit on the sidelines and just uh, fester in my own sadness. Right on, okay. So what takes place next? As part of this, this, this growing. All right, you can't. There's no way he had friends in school. To be honest, uh, the planning didn't right? occur until about a month ago. Most of it was actually just. He said he did, but there's no okay. way he and did. Daydreaming. Okay. All right. So, the thinking and daydreaming. When did that start? That started about a month after the rebellion, in uh, May of 2014. Okay, so... So, I mean, so, so in June, I started uh, thinking about this stuff. And then that continued right up till about a month ago? Yes, which is when I uh, booked uh, the uh, van with the rider okay. in order oh to uh, use as a tool for rebellion. Okay, all right. So t t With a rider? That process. What was going through your mind and how was, you know, what were you thinking when you were doing all of this? What was going on? I was thinking that it was a time that I uh, stood up to the chat. Oh, it's a spaces. company, okay. Okay. And then, and then there was, uh, what he, happened? So this... He had as many friends as you did, friends. buddy. So I uh, booked the van. Yep. And then I just simply wait until uh, today. Yep. And then I go rent the van, and then I uh, drive it, take it downtown to Toronto. Okay. And I just start using it as a weapon. Okay. All right, and and so when you say that, what, what do you mean by that? Meaning, I it, the vehicle collided with uh, several pedestrians, some of who are no longer alive as a result. Right, right, okay. Can I ask why were you looking specifically for uh, a truck? Because it would be uh, large enough to uh, inflict uh, severe damage. Okay, that makes sense. And in this thinking, what were you thinking specifically? He's just over it now. He's just talking. About how, uh, how the foundations of the world would be shooken by this event. Okay. And uh, when you say that, what do you mean by the foundations of this world? Meaning that I, I, I'm, I was fairly confident that others would be inspired to uh, repeat the same actions as me in basically just to uh, overthrow society. Okay. Like, I don't think he understands how like invalid. Like he just eats one person. It just he just now, doesn't matter enough. What are you thinking enough. while you're in I the I think band. he over evaluates himself. Uh, I'm thinking that this is it. This is the day of retribution. Okay. 
And uh, anything else in your mind? Just that. That's okay. that, that's the only thing that's in my mind. It's just burning in my mind. Burning in your mind. Yeah. I'm thinking that uh, this is it. I see all these people. It's uh, time to uh, go for it. Time to go for it. And what do you do? I uh, floor the pedal. Yep. I speed the van towards them, and I uh, allow Dashi. the van to uh, collide with I them. I am the lawyer of this man. And Dog, I am not even going to try. Uh, I am turning him in. Some people get knocked out of the way. Some people roll o over the top of the van. Okay. And then what, what happens? I uh, continue doing that until, um, I, I, in fact, actually, to be honest, the only reason I stopped my attack was because someone's drink got splashed on my uh, windshield, and I was worried that I would uh, crash the van anyway, so I decided, okay, now I, I wanted to do more, but I've kind of been foiled by a lack of visibility, so then that's when I uh, pulled, I turned right, and I pulled, and I saw Dahi? the cops... Far so left or far right, the lines are too bed. fucking blurred, okay. man. His I want off this wild ride, please. For the attack Shush. and the attentive precautions he took for each I'm step TTS. shows an individual with a visibly corrupt yet undeniably balanced mind. He is not insane, and what the detective has got him to divulge in the last hour of this interrogation will prove that in a court of law. I see a patrol car pull over, and I hear the cops screaming at me to get out. So I get out, and I. Uh, point my wallet at the cop in it with the intent for it to be confused at the gun so that I could be fatally shot. Okay. And was that something you were thinking about? Yes. I know what I mean. I, I, what I'm saying even, is... Even beforehand, I uh, premediated as an attempted uh, suicide by cop. You wanted, to, you wanted to be killed by the police? Yes. Okay. Um, Suicidal tendencies are by no means enough to prove insanity on their own, but they can be used to argue detachment from oneself. If a defense team can prove that the defendant's self-interest were of no concern to himself, they can also lessen the perception of wickedness with relation to the lack of concern that he had for others. The detective will now attempt to garner information that the suspect, in reality, did not intend to die that day. Can I ask why you decided to, to, to equip yourself with a wallet and not something else? Uh, I was worried, I was thinking about purchasing a toy gun, right. but I was kind of paranoid that some, for whatever reason, the Rydal rental company would ask to see my pockets or any bag if I chose to bring that, so I decided to go as stealthy as possible so no one suspects anything. Okay, all right. The prosecution during his trial will most likely argue that he could have picked up the van first and then retrieved a toy gun afterwards. Nevertheless, you get out of the, the van, the officer or his board, oh, sorry. Oh my I, God. You, correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I get this right. You get out of the van because the officer orders you out? Yes. Okay. He was ordered out of the van at gunpoint. Had he hit the gas at that moment, he would have most likely been shot, and the prosecution can argue that he was in fear of that happening, which is why he complied with the orders. Uh, and you want to uh, you want to die by, uh, by, by suicide by police, uh, so you point your wallet at him? Yes. Okay, and, and uh, do you say anything to the officer? Uh, I actually told him that I had a gun in my pocket, which okay. was untrue. Right. Uh, then I, had to, I twice I stuck my left hand in my uh, pocket and attempted to do this just to uh, provoke a uh, reaction. Okay. Uh, that, uh, he, unfortunately, he didn't react, right. so then I ended up being ordered to the ground, so I knew at that point He's not going to shoot me, so uh, I've lost. So I, just, I had no choice but to just get on the ground. Okay, so just walk me through this, this step by step because I'm, I'm a little confused. So you, you get out of the van, so you, you, you turn right, you can't see, you hear the police, you know they're coming, you see the police officer approach, you stop your vehicle, uh, you realize this is the, the end. He orders you out, you get out of the, the van. Yes. Now your planning, your plan was to die by suicide by cop. So you said you reached into your pocket twice. Well, actually, I well, originally, I, I, the entire time I had, I was holding my wallet like, Jesus with my Christ. right hand. But then when I saw that that wasn't working, I reached into my pocket with my left hand and quickly pulled it out and formed my hand into the shape of a gun like this. Okay. Um, with the hope that he would panic and shoot me. That, of course, didn't happen. This entire incident was captured on video.
These oh were God. the two motions that the suspect alleged were for the purpose of provoking a lethal response. They seem convincing, yet notice where the cop was looking and where his gun was pointed at that moment. Eyes looking to the right, away from the suspect, and weapon pointed towards the ground. The assailant most likely knew he wasn't going to be shot. The police officer was on his own and was incredibly brave to initially confront the suspect without backup. Yet at this moment, he's assessed the threat and recognized there is no need to use deadly force. He wouldn't have taken his eyes I'll off the attacker. I'll be honest. I feel like you should have shot him. Like, why, why are this you looking away? This is established by the fact that he takes his time to turn know, off the cop, siren so I guess to I try really... and de-escalate the situation. The police officer holsters his pistol and takes out his baton to avoid the use of unnecessary lethal force. As soon as he takes his advancing first step, the assailant immediately gives up. The assailant, who had just purposely inflicted an untold amount of pain and suffering on so many lives, surrendered at the very first sign that he himself was to encounter any sort of physical discomfort. And so, realizing that the officer wasn't going to shoot you, what did you do at that point? I realized I had no choice but to get on the ground because I was probably going to be uh, tackled anyways or tased, and if I'm, if I'm going to live, I'd rather not encounter physically a painful experience, so I decided I have no choice but to admit defeat at that point. Right, okay. And so when you say admit defeat, what did you do? I uh, got on the ground. Okay. That's quite an experience. That is quite a... Uh... Not the usual everyday experience. No, no it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Um... Did I miss anything? I believe that's everything. Alec, I thank you for talking to me. I really do. I really do. I really appreciate that. You've given me some insight. And, uh, I appreciate it, too. Um, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Okay. Alec <coughs> Manassian's trial date is set for February 3rd, 2020. Wow. Wow. I classify myself as a hardcore gamer, an average of five hours a day, <laughs> rookie numbers. <laughs> yeah, average Chad, arrogant and obnoxious, average supreme gentleman, runs over 10 innocent people. <laughs> like, bro, JCS, the officer slips up when he reveals himself as a Chad by laughing at the beta uprising. Bro, I'm almost like, almost wish I didn't watch that. It's just like... Oh my god, that person exists. Those people exist. Like it's like a community on 4chan, I guess. Wow. Apparently he's friends with what's his name? Roger Elliot something. Wow. You say ban 4chan, but it's like if 4chan didn't exist, something else would exist. These people they go somewhere. They just do. They're just mentally ill. But there's no way that person had any friends. There's no way. How do you know? Cause it's just like I don't know. I go back in like school and it's like, I guess it was just my school, but uh, there's no way a person could function and speak like that with like that level of bluntness, bluntness. Um, even if they're not talking about being a uh, running over 10 people, being in something like talking with that level of bluntness, just in general, there's no way they had friends.